I am back in the kitchen today and I've got kind of a fun video that we're going to be working on together today. And that is a collaboration with my friend Carrie over at Keep It Simple DIY here on YouTube. She and I are both going to be making some hand pie recipes. Now she already sent to me what she's making and they look incredible. She had three different things. I'm also going to have three different things that I'm making. So I hope that you'll find something that you love. Now for me today, I have some breaking news in my life and that is that I have eliminated wheat from my life. It has not been easy nor fun necessarily, but I'm doing it. I'm feeling a lot better and I'm no longer in denial about the fact that I don't need to have wheat in my life if I don't want to feel bad. So anyway, today I am doing gluten-free crust. What I'm going to show you today is three different hand pies. My first one is going to be a brown sugar peach in no particular order because I don't know exactly how I'm going to go about this. The next one will be a breakfast hand pie that's going to be ham, potato, egg, and then some of them all have some cheese in. And then my last one is going to be my favorite one. This is something that I have loved since my childhood. It was literally one of the only things that my mother would cook for special occasions. It's going to be a chicken cordon bleu ham pie with chicken, cheese, Swiss cheese, ham, maybe a little Dijon in there. So come along. Let's go ahead and get these ham pies started. While I'm gathering up my stuff, I want you to meet Carrie. So she's made a little introduction for herself because she can say it a lot better than I can. Anyway, I'm going to get started on a few things here and you meet Carrie while I'm Hi, doing it. My that. name is Carrie. This is Keep It Simple DIY. Today I am filming ham pies. I have some apple ham pies. I also have some uncooked pizza ham pies that I am going to cook up in the air fryer. And then I have an experiment that I was running that I am about to cut open. So come on over if you're interested in how I made these and if they are a success when I cut them open. And I also make videos about cleaning, cooking, gardening, homesteading, all of the above. So I look forward to seeing you after you watch this. So I made this dough yesterday and we're just gonna see how it goes, you guys. <laughs> Cause I don't know. This is a first for me. And I do not know this dough is hard as a rock. Okay, and it is breaking apart. Uh, <laughs> I'm scared. I don't know how this is going to go. Okay, plastic. Plastic. We're going to move on to plan B. These are baggies, essentially. They're like, um, they don't have a zipper on them or anything, but it kind of shapes the dough in and of itself because it has to stay contained in the bag. Now, I will say that flavor-wise, texture-wise, all of that, gluten-free flours have come a long way from about 10 years ago when I was doing gluten-free. There was like nothing. I mean, you had to make the blend yourself. You had to get the rice flour and the xanthan gum and the, I don't even know what else it was, but you had to buy all of those separate components that you'll find now in a cup for cup replacement. And you had to mix it yourself, which I just did not even try. It's probably like a quarter inch thickness. I think I would like it a little bit thinner if I can get it there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. That feels better. So, we just have to work with it. <laughs> just have to work with it. This is all new, and I can completely get rid of this thing and just set my dough onto a plate because, um, this is not going to be, this is not going to be the ticket for this gluten-free dough. I want to do all the dough rolling first and then like this. In fact, probably just go ahead and throw this back into the fridge because now the dough can be as hard as it wants to be. I really, it doesn't matter at this point and this is easy to handle. Okay, well, while I finish rolling out the dough, I'm going to show you some things that I did the day before to prepare for this day. And that was cubing up some ham for both the breakfast hand pie and the chicken cordon bleu hand pie. I just used a ham steak and then I cut it into small cubes as you see here. 
I also shredded up some cheese. I did some sharp cheddar cheese as well as some Swiss cheese for the chicken cordon bleu hand pies. And I cooked up some hash browns in the air fryer. I just put them in for about 10 minutes on 400. That way they would have a little bit of crisp to them and a little bit more flavor than just straight from the freezer. Additionally, I cooked up some scrambled eggs. The thing, the reason I wanted to do these things in advance was so that everything will be nice and cool when it goes into the hand pot. Oh, and I shredded up a rotisserie chicken as well. In the end, I didn't end up needing nearly as much of the ingredients as I thought that I would just based on the amount of dough that I had prepared. I wasn't exactly sure how many hand pies I would get out of that this amount of dough in the first place. So, And given that it was a new recipe to me for the gluten-free pie dough, I wanted to make sure that it was something that I really liked in the first place before I went and used a ton of gluten-free flour and other ingredients on this. So spoiler alert i actually loved these i've eaten almost all of these and alan loves them too the the breakfast ones turned out incredible we really enjoyed those and it is so good to be able to just throw these into the air fryer i'll show you at the end exactly how i do air fry these but you see here i'm just preparing the chicken cordon bleu ones i tried to be really conservative on the amount of ingredients that i put inside so that it wouldn't be too hard to actually fill them and close them So I just did circles. I used a bowl actually to cut out the circles for these and then I ended up kind of flattening them even more so before I filled them with the ingredients. I've got a little bit of dough left over so I'm going to be able to do one more round with these. And as you see, the dough is a lot easier to roll once it is kind of heated up, sat out quite a while now at the beginning I had to have that dough on the counter for about an hour and it still was not very easy to work with because it was still very very hard if I had it to do over again I would just make the dough and roll it out on the same day rather than make the dough the day before and put it in the refrigerator so next time I know go ahead and work with that dough right right at that time and it'll be a lot easier to deal with if I had just gotten it flattened out into sheets like I did here on the previous day, I would have been in business on this day and it wouldn't have taken me nearly as much time to get going on this. So I'm just crimping the edges. That way everything still stays nice and sealed in there when I do go to bake these up and I won't have any trouble with the cheese and things kind of running out of there. I got the chicken cordon bleu ones into the refrigerator there, but the next ones that I'm gonna do are a peach, brown, su brown sugar peach, pie filling that I made. I made this this morning. I'll tell you exactly how I made it because I did it while I was getting ready. I put one bag of frozen peaches into a saucepan, quarter cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of water into the pan as well. I let that all cook on a low heat for about 15 minutes probably. Oh, I also put a teaspoon of cinnamon in with that because I wanted it to be a cinnamon filling. Anyway, I let the peaches simmer for about 10 minutes on a low heat. And then I used some xanthan gum to thicken the sauce that was remaining in there. So it came out nice and thick actually, not too thick, but pretty thick. So the sauce was still really loose and runny like um, a juice. So once I put, I only used a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum in here and I thickened up that sauce, it turned out perfectly. So I've just had that in the refrigerator getting chilled down so that I can roll it into the pastry. This is how much dough I have for my dessert. So what I think I'm gonna do rather than do hand pie, which is doubled over pastry, I would not be able to get very many out of that at all. Probably only like four. So I think I'm just gonna cut that into some small circles and then do them more of an open-faced pastry that I can cook up into in the oven. So another good option for this type of pastry would be to make a galette like a round flat pastry that has the fruit filling in the middle. And then you just kind of fold up the edges of the galette and that makes a sort of a crust on the sides. That would have been a nice option too, but I wanted more of an individual dessert. So I just kind of made small squares. I wasn't sure originally if these were gonna try to spread on the pan or anything like that since I had never baked this crust before. These did not end up spreading at all. So you could put them really as close together as you wanted to. Good thing too, because look how closely I put them together. So <laughs> I kind of made 
a little divot in the dough with a spoon. This is the back of a spoon. And then I put my fruit filling on top. These were delicious, of course. I mean, peach filling on pastry. And then I also had some pearl sugar that I have been holding onto for quite a while. Never have never found a great way to use it. So on this day, I was like, okay, I'm finally going to be able to use that pearl sugar. I ended up topping these up with some pearl sugar before I baked them. And I wasn't sure as well. This was a day of experiments, y'all. I have been very unsure about my cooking to this point with the gluten-free cooking. So um, here I am reading the pearl sugar, like, what is this going to do? So I wasn't sure. I felt pretty confident that this was going to kind of dissolve on the top part there, but it would probably stay put and not dissolve on the crust part. So that's exactly what happened. The pearl sugar that was on top of the peach filling did kind of melt into the peach filling, which is fine. But the portion that was on the pastry dough, it stayed nice and it stayed really nice and stayed in those little pearls after baking. So it did give a really good crunch after everything was baked up. Next, I wanted to move on to these breakfast pastries finally. And I did the exact same thing with them. I ended up using more of a square form. I kind of just cut them into squares and then they turned into basically the same kind of semicircle shape anyway. I get myself a pan out. All of these, with the exception of a few that I ended up baking up on this day, because I did bake up some of, I did bake up the peach pastries. I did bake up one of the chicken cordon bleu and I baked up one breakfast on this day that I was filming because I definitely wanted to try them. And then the rest of them, I've just ended up freezing. So they've been in the freezer. I've just taken one out here and again and cooked them up right in the air fryer, which I will show you exactly how I cook them up in the air fryer at the end of this video so that you can see the temperature and everything that I use. They turn out so, so good in the air fryer because they get extra crispy. The pastry gets done really, really nicely top and bottom. So nothing soggy about it and they turn out delicious. Since I didn't know exactly how much my pastry would make of these ham pies, I had a whole lot more ingredients than I needed on hand at this time. So what I ended up doing with the extra ingredients, I obviously I just repurposed the rotisserie chicken into a dinner for that week. I can't even remember what I made, but I can always find a way to use rotisserie chicken. But the other, the breakfast ingredients here, I ended up making bowls out of those, just some breakfast bowls potato, egg, cheese, and ham. I mean, that's a delicious breakfast bowl right there. So I just threw those into some containers that I had on hand and we ate those throughout the week. You see Moose back there, he's waiting on a bite of ham. And then I just threw these in the refrigerator and it's time to taste what we have already baked up. I've got some baked up and I'm excited to try these and the little pearl sugar worked out perfectly on these and as I said it didn't really the stuff that was on top did kind of melt but what was sitting on the crust stayed cute and pearly and super nice okay mm. it adds such a nice texture if you didn't have any of that pearl sugar like I have there you could use raw sugar and put that around the exterior, or if you did a full hand pie, put that on the top. And that would add good crunch. The crust, I mean, you can there's no difference between this gluten-free crust and a regular pie crust. Like I taste no difference at all. It tastes incredible. Okay. Let's try the savory ones. I'm gonna set him aside because I will be coming back to those. So we'll start with breakfast of the savory ones. These baked up really, really nicely. The bottoms are really nicely done. This looks good. The potatoes look really good. Okay, it's a good amount of filling too. I'm really surprised because I feel like I was being so skimpy, but it's just, it's plenty inside of there. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Hopefully I'm not gonna burn my mouth up. Mmm. That is good. The pastry is really good. I was so scared that that pastry was going to not taste good. This was a lot of work, but I actually think it was worth it 
to have some things that I can eat that will be really, really easy. This is the chicken cordon bleu one. Okay, I'm going in. I have to have a bite. That is good. It's not dry. The melty cheese really makes it, makes it where it's not dry at all. The pastry is so good though. Okay, well, I have to tell you that turned out even better than I expected. I was really doubting things. <laughs> I was really doubting things along the way. I've never worked with a pastry like that, but it turned out incredible. It's flaky. It's buttery. It's good. It's very good. So I would highly recommend it. If you're gluten-free, I'm going to leave the recipe down below for that. If you're not gluten-free, use whatever pastry pie crust recipe that you want and they'll be just as delicious. I mean, put in whatever fillings you want. Just don't overdo it on the fillings. That way you can close things up. You saw how I was struggling with some of mine, but these are so good. I'm excited to have them. What I'm gonna do with the rest is not bake them. I'm gonna put them into the freezer um, unbaked. And then whenever I wanna cook one up, I'll just take it out and probably I'll cook them in the air fryer to be quite honest with you, because that's just seems to be the way that I cook most things nowadays. And you can egg wash them like I did. You certainly don't have to, though. You could brush a little milk on top or something, either either way, um, or just leave it plain. But this was an experimental day in the kitchen for sure. And I feel a lot better now knowing that I can cook some things up like this with a gluten-free crust, with the gluten-free ingredients, all the things that I used that were a little bit different than my normal stuff to use, but still delicious really really good so i'll freeze these and have these for any old day that i want and then also you saw we got those breakfast bowls out of this because i had way too much ingredients so that turned out great too now i have a little bit of breakfast meal prep for the rest of the week so anyway i hope that you enjoyed this i know it was a little bit of a fumbly day in the kitchen <laughs> for me um i feel a little bit more confident now though after we're all after all is said and done so thank you so much for being here I hope that you will check out Carrie's channel as well and see how her hand pies came together. So go over there and check her channel out as well. Go give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, I'm Sarah and this is Brown Family Goods and I will see you back here again real soon.